imagine being born into slavery. Your childhood is spent plowing fields. As a teenager, you're struck in the head with a weight which causes you to have severe headaches and seizures. One morning, you're beaten five times before breakfast. You have had it with this life of slavery and make the decision to escape to freedom. In John 8, 34, Jesus says, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Freedom comes when we leave that sin and say, I have had it with this life of slavery to that sin. I decide to follow Jesus. And when we admit we need help and rely on God to save us, it's freeing. As followers of Christ, we are called to now use that freedom to free others. There's something about us humans that wants to be able to do what we want. We desire freedom. Robots have tasks programmed into them to perform. They do what their creator tells them to do. But that's not how God made us. Instead, he gives us a free will so that we can each choose to either live for ourselves or for him. But I have got to tell you that true freedom comes when we honor and obey the Lord. In Galatians 5.13, it says, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. If I spend all my life watching Netflix and eating Jimmy John's, although it would be pretty fun, it would be completely meaningless. Freedom is pointless if we're not using it. When we spend all of our time in the band, or thrift shopping, or watching Netflix, we've got to be careful that we don't put those things before God and waste our freedom. Maybe sports is an idol in your life and God wants you to quit. Or maybe God has placed you on that team so that you can minister freedom to your teammates. Know God so that you can know his will. Then obey him. Like Paul said in Ephesians 5, 16, make the most of every opportunity. It's the great commission to spread the gospel. The reason we are still on this earth is because there are people around us that need to know about this freedom that they can experience in Christ. The people we see at Kroger need Jesus just as much as the people we see in youth group, at work, and wherever God puts us. Sharing your testimony is a way for God to use you to free others. I remember the night in youth group when I first shared mine. It was super awkward to tell so many people how I had sinned. But it was so freeing to realize that even though I've messed up, God loves me anyways. Sharing your testimony is not only freeing for yourself, but it's freeing to those who hear it and now know that they're not the only ones going through what they're going through. Romans 8.15 says, You did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave against a fear, but you received a spirit of sonship. Now I get excited to share my story because it's the story of my loving father who has set me free and adopted me into his family. The scene I mentioned of the slave is a true story. That woman chose to escape to freedom, but that's not all. Once she got there, you know what she did? With her head pounding and scars on her back, she returned to help free her family. This woman known as Harriet Tubman used the Underground Railroad, Railroad to help free slaves and returned over 19 times. Once we've received God's freedom, are we sharing him with others or are we selfishly staying where we're safe? Even when Harriet's slave master had a hefty reward for whoever turned her in, she still went back. Hundreds of people were freed because of Harriet Tubman, a former slave herself. God uses imperfect people who have had their share of struggles to bring others to this freedom we can have in Christ. Harriet didn't return to be enslaved again, but rather to free those still in bondage. Will you let sin enslave you again? Or will you use your freedom to free others? Good job.